motherhood really exposed me to the duality of the emotions that it wasn't going to be easy. And there is a beautiful article by the Washington Post from this researcher, Dr. Highcox, and she talks about not only toxic positivity, but emotional perfectionism and both toxic positivity and emotional perfectionism in this amazing Washington Post article, which I'll link later, um, you know, in the show notes have the same underlying tendency and root cause, which is a discomfort with people's negative emotions. And, you know, how many of you grew up with this, like, Oh, you're not supposed to cry about that. Don't cry. I'll give you something to cry about. Like that, even just sharing that right now, I'm feeling it in my nervous system. I'm feeling it in my bones. And I've only been able to reconcile that and really integrate that as me becoming a mom of a two-year-old. And literally this was happening as I was writing the book. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't want to pass down my generational trauma of what my parents couldn't handle because their parents couldn't handle you know, their, their own emotions. And then, you know, previously generations before that. So we're just passing this down, passing this down. And is it easy to give a kid a pupper, which is like in, you know, in Hindi, the four finger and the five finger slap. And, you know, for, if you're, if you're Filipino, it's like usually like throwing the chanclas or the chinelas. No, it's not. It's not easy to do that because you have to be able to emotionally regulate yourself and then really pay attention to the patterns. And it's so difficult, by the way, you know, with, especially when you're just trying to go through the motions. And if you're not, you know, getting sleep or if there's something that was pressing during the day, it is the greatest spiritual practice, right? And so when parents talk, used to talk about this, I never really fully understood. Yet, now it's becoming normalcy and which is why I wanted to write this book, That's Up Now What, to really give, for those of you who aren't parents yet or maybe don't have children, to give you agency in saying and normalizing those feelings that, yeah, it's okay. That sucked because back in my 20s when I was going through my shit storms and my hail storms of, you know, really trying to figure out who I was or even going through just tippy toeing around my emotions in my abusive marriage, my first marriage, I didn't have that languaging. And so I love how in the, this article, you know, Brenda Kalia, she's a psychology professor, professor at Miami university who studies perfectionism and emotional expression. And she says in this article that to be awesome all the time is extremely debilitating because it ignores reality. And honestly, this is not what life is like. And she's so right. And I agree with this and this perspective. And it only really happened as we, you know, as, as you're parenting younger children, they don't have an emotional radar. They are going to cry, you know, take any two-year-old, they don't get their way. They're going to feel it out. They're going to embrace the suck. They're going to transform the suck. And then Two minutes later, if they were allowed to fully express and have that meltdown, it's why it's called a meltdown, then they're regulated. Then they've gotten out of their system. Then they've like shaken it out and, and they've kicked and screamed. I mean, you know, many of you probably like seen a kid you know, get crazy in a grocery store and moms out there, you know, we've all been there and you're like so embarrassed. And I love the moms. And now, you know, I've even been so compassionate with myself in this practice where I'm like, okay, so we're going to sit here. And yes, it sucks that I'm not going to buy you that lollipop or yes, you can be mad at me because I am not going to have you eat this raw apple right now in the middle of the grocery store. And when we get home, you're going to get a treat. So to be able to practice the way that we are in managing this, it takes a certain level of resiliency and grit and awareness and vulnerability because I'm not saying that we need to be victims in our circumstance. Okay. I am saying, and we're, we don't even need to be the victors in this experience either. I'm just saying, let's be vulnerable. Let's share the vulnerability of when something bad has happened. Something did not go your way. You didn't get the promotion. Your friend betrayed you. You had a hard day at work. All of the things went terribly wrong and 
to say, well, that's awesome that, you know, we'll, we'll just start back another day tomorrow. And I used to be that way, by the way, you know, because things were so bad that that was my coping mechanism. I didn't know another way when people would say, oh gosh, I'm so sorry about your mom. I'd be like, it's okay. It's okay. You know? And, and I would just brush it off. And now, you know, I want to go back to the little Nita and me as I'm like doing this whole healing process. And for any of you who are grieving right now through loss or going through a major crisis transition in life or going through just everyday losses that we have, I want to give you permission to say, you know what, I hate I am so sorry that you're going through this and acknowledging the pain in that, acknowledging how horrific that was and acknowledging how painful that had to be, yet not living in the suck. There's the difference between that sucked, okay, and the now what part, which is in the middle. And in the middle, it's just embracing the heaviness of that moment. I'm not asking you to sit in it for a very long time because there are some of you listening to this who are like, yeah, and it's so hard for me to get out of bed and it's so hard for me to do this. And I get so stuck in my patterns. Now, if we are talking about feeling stuck, that is a separate issue. But majority of us, we bury, we distract, we numb our feelings. And it's no wonder that since the pandemic, we've had an increase of people using, you know, having substance abuse, and, and, and resorting to alcohol and other behaviors and addictive behaviors, let alone a whole mental health challenge since the pandemic. Right. And I want to just bring to the table because I've seen this and, you know, there's no fault or no shame of their own. They're just likely doing the best that they can. But when I've spoken to mothers and, you know, this was before I was, I was living in LA and, and, you know, we were going through, a, a, an interesting, challenging time, right? I was, I was reinventing myself. I was, I was just kind of the, the early stages of motherhood. So you're not really sleeping. You're not really having that confidence that you know, really what you're doing as a mom. And I'm still trying to do all of these other things, right. Uh, in my business and, speaking and supporting a household and being the CEO of the household and in our businesses, as well as partnership. I mean, it's, it's a lot of hats, literally, uh, that a lot of us women wear on a daily basis. And I don't think we necessarily talk about those challenges and while I love it. And while I have a great partner who supports me in all that, when I would share some of these struggles just to get, you know, close and real, honestly, raw and real and brave with some of the friends that I knew who were also moms, it would be like, oh no, I'm, it, you know, everything's so great and everything is so, just so perfect. And gosh, you know, it just, these times are just, they're, they're like the best. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me right now? <laughs> Am I just going crazy? And I want to anybody who's listening to this right now, who's going like, gag me, <laughs> like, uh, is this, is this real talk? But I've literally heard this from so many women and, and, and I wanted to really spark a different dialogue. I wanted to spark a dialogue of saying, yes, motherhood is amazing. It's beautiful. When my kid goes to sleep and I'm sure you've seen these memes of like, you know, uh, mom is so exhausted at the end of the day and she's so tired. But then as soon as her little one goes to sleep, she's scrolling on her photos on her phone of her kid who just went to sleep. And I just like, what are you doing? You know, didn't, didn't you just see Ari all day? Didn't you say like, he should totally go to bed right now. Cause you're so exhausted. And now you're looking at photos of him on your phone. And I'm like, yeah, cause I, I don't know. I, I, I missed him and I didn't even see these. Right. And so it is the perplexity and the the, the challenges and the duality and sometimes the paradox of the emotions that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, would some call that crazy? Maybe, but honestly, it is embracing the full spectrum of our humanity. See you next time at The Brave Table.